Hi everyone, we're going to be talking about working with the Kabbalah in regards to working intimately with the Tarot of Vampires. And the Kabbalah is a structure that Ian references for pretty much every card in the Tarot in this deck and he goes into detail as to why we connect the Kabbalah and the Tarot together and um, exactly how we do that. Now, I'm not going to say anything in this video that Ian doesn't have in this book, Phantasmagoria. So you can reference this book at any time to get more clarity or if you need to remember something that we talk about here. I am not an authority on the Kabbalah and this is in no way meant to appropriate anyone else's cultural, religious background. Uh, this is a occult study on the symbolism that is connected, interconnected with tarot and how we read tarot. So I just want to be clear about that before we get started. Um, so, and again, I'm not an authority on the Kabbalah. And if after this you feel drawn to do more research because it really calls to you, then I would strongly encourage you to do that. And I would tell you as well, um, I'm not going to post a bunch of links to different books or things like that. Um, there's so much information out there. There's a plethora of information. You can do a simple Google search or a search on YouTube and find more in-depth videos on the Kabbalah. And a search on Amazon will show you again, a plethora of books to give you more information into the Kabbalah itself. So please feel free to avail yourself of that if you feel called to explore this outside of this video. I am not an authority and so therefore can I give you all of that information. So, uh, Eliathus Levi first linked the Kabbalah with Tarot and then other devotees, including Waite and Crowley, really started to work on that connection in the symbolism and also um, the connection between very specific cards and the journey of tarot and Kabbalah. Now, the tree of life in the Kabbalah is really about the descent of the everlasting into the manifest world. I am quoting from Ian Daniels here. I just want to be clear with that. And we explore that through the different paths between the Sephiroth in the tree of life, which the diagram for that is in Phantasmagoria. I'm about to show it to you, and then I'm going to talk about it some more. Um, if you want to follow along, feel free to grab your book. The diagram is on page 28. So the descent of the everlasting into the manifest world is the journey of the tree of life, and we see that story shown in the major arcana, specifically in tarot. Okay, And there are references for each of these major arcana cards, and the Sephiroth they're connected to, in the guidebook so you can go right to your guidebook and get that information there are four um, levels or worlds that are represented in the tree of life now i am self-taught so i may butcher the pronunciations of these if i do i apologize at Zulith is the top the archetypal world it is the element of fire represented by the lords in the court cards pure spirit pure idea all other worlds come from this place. I am reading from the guidebook for this, so all of this is in your guidebook. Bria, the creative world comes next. All right, so that's ruled by the queens and the element of water. This is where idea is given pattern. Then there is Yetzera underneath us, the formative world. This is the element of air and the princes. It's where pattern is given expression. Then Asaya, the material world. This is where idea, so, pure spirit pure idea then it becomes the pattern with the queen then it is given expression with the princes and then it is given physical form with the daughters and the element of earth okay there's a mystical quality to the element of earth to the mundane and to the physical that we see as the purest expression of the divine in this tree of life and that's why this deck especially appealed to me back at the beginning of my journey with tarot so And I'm going to read this part for you. Much like modern science, the Kabbalah asserts that life comes from a tiny point within the center of nothingness and is represented by the Sephira at the top of the tree, which is Kether, divine energy. Then it walks you through the process into Malkuth, the physical manifestation, the physical universe that I just described. So that is where we get descent of the universe into the manifest world. Now, the paths that link these sephira, which we are seeing in the diagram, these are the cards of the major arcana. So I'm going to show you this, and then, except I just lost a piece of my book. All right. 
And I'm going to read off of this for you and then I will show this to you again so you can pause it if you would like and make notes yourself if, if that's your jam. So, Kether or Kether, this is the crown. It is represented also by the planet Pluto. The paths that form off of the crown or Kether are the fool and the magician. Then we have Chakma, which is Neptune, represents wisdom. Then we have the third Sephira, which is Bina, Bina, however you want to pronounce that, whatever the correct terminology is there, please forgive me for mispronouncing that. Saturn, and it represents understanding. <coughs> Connecting these two is the Empress and Tarot. So we had the Fool, the Magician, the Empress, the middle line going straight down the tree of life is the High Priestess. I just want to share that with you. So she goes right down to Tifereth. That journey is the High Priestess, right? Coming off of Chakma and into the fourth Sephiroth is the Hierophant. This is Chesed with Jupiter and the understanding, the awareness of this Sephiroth. The meaning is mercy. Connecting four to five is strength. Five is Gebera, represented by Mars, holding a space of severity. Bina and Gebera here are connected by the chariot. The lovers connect Bina and Tifereth. The star connects Chakma and Tifereth. All of this, I assure you, is in your diagram. Okay, so then we have off of Tifereth, which is the sun, and beauty. Then we see the devil and death connected from Tifereth to Netzek, which is the planet Venus, the element of victory. Then we have the eighth Sephiroth, which is Hod, connecting Mercury and Splendor. From Geberah to Hod is the hanged man. From Chesed to Netzek is fortune, or the wheel of fortune. Then we have Yesed, which is represented by the moon and holds the space of the foundation. The emperor and the sun connect Hod to Yesid and Netzek to Yesid. From Yesid to Malkuth, now remember, Malkuth is number 10. This is Earth, the kingdom. The world connects these two. Netzek number seven connects to Malkuth number 10 with the moon. And number eight, Sephiroth number eight, Hod, is connected to Malkuth with judgment. So this is the path of the tarot through the tree of life. Now, why do we need to know this? Or why do we want to know this? Maybe that's a more accurate way to put this. The reason why it is helpful for us is for our own personal development to understand the way through those Sephiroth, which again is the divine made manifest into the physical, those individual journeys can help us on our own path to invoke, evoke, call in the energies of those major arcana cards to bring in the experience we either want to create or to bring understanding and awareness to the experience we are currently having. So it empowers us, it grants us encouragement, inspiration, and it gives us guidance on our paths. And this is why we look at the connections between those Sephiroth and the major arcana cards, as well as those four worlds, to help us understand perhaps what we may be going through at any given time. A wonderful exercise, if you have the Oracle of Emanations, is to work with some of those cards which contain the names of the Sephiroth with the um, Tarot of Vampires and almost kind of make the chart, like lay the chart out in your space or work with specific Sephiroth and the corresponding pathway that you'd like to work with for yourself in Tarot. Having those cards out maybe on your altar can really help you to connect with the Sephiroth themselves. But one last time I'm going to show you the image. And I, I just, I don't want you to get too caught up in mine because I want you to really create your own here. But you can see, again, 
the descent and the importance of the descent and that the descent is not a diminishment. It's actually an empowerment and um, an awakening in some ways, like a leveling up, if you will. So when we work with the Sephiroth, it's more almost at an unconscious level once we've done our research in the way that it applies to actual readings, whether they're for ourselves or others. But as I said, in the Major Arcana, um, Ian does let you know right at the top, like for instance, here is the chariot. In the alchemy section, which is the first part underneath the title of the card, it says, connects Bina with Gebra on the tree of life. So you're going to have those little cheat sheets and, and, and the, that helpful information every step of the way to make it easier for you to remember the pathways and to understand how they are connected. And that's a personal journey, which is why I entitled this series Working Intimately because it is about going to the next level with the deck, which does require an investment of time and energy in the building of a relationship. But if you are willing to offer that up for yourself and to the deck itself, the energies associated with the deck, there's a real sweetness that comes from the relationship and your readings become really empowered and beautiful, whether they're just for you or you're offering them to others as well. I realized after I made this video that I forgot to address how the minor arcana are represented in the Kabbalah's Tree of Life itself. So I just wanted to make sure that I included this in the video so that those of you who are just learning about the Kabbalah in relation to Tarot of Vampires can feel like you're empowered in that. So the Sephiroth are 10 archetypal spheres, qualities, um, I'm sorry, 10 archetypal qualities that are represented as these spheres on the Tree of Life, as we just talked about in regards to the paths in between the spheres representing major arcana cards and how you would take a journey through tarot and through those four worlds as you move down into the manifest world from the divine. So the Sephiroth themselves are 10, these 10 spheres, and they are... If, as far as the minor arcana go, they are the numbers that you see in this diagram. So the four worlds, we can see those represented as the court cards. Again, the paths in between the spheres, the sephiroth, are the majors. And then the spheres themselves represent the minor arcana numbered cards. And you would apply your suit, for instance, the scepters being fire to the numbers. So we start with Kither at one. Um, Chakma represents the twos and the minors. Bina represents the threes. Chesed, the fours. Gebra, the fives. Tifereth, the sixes. Seven, Netzek. Eight is Hod. Nine is Yesed. And ten is Malkuth. So we can apply kind of the key words that Ian gives us to the, the numerology aspect or the numbered aspect of working with the minors when it comes to the Kabbalah. So, you know, Kether as the crown, we look at that as the aces being like that purest representation of the energy. You know, the twos hold that wisdom, the space of choices and um, coming together with others, union. Bina holds that space of understanding, which we can also see in um, manifestation, in belief, and in the creation aspect with community. Um, the fours equal, have that, Chesed has that energy of mercy, so we can see where, when it is applied and not applied, what happens to the situation. Geberah represents severity in the Sephiroth, um, in the Tree of Life, excuse me, and uh, we can definitely see that in the fives in tarot, dealing in the fives in tarot, dealing with themes of you know, fear, rejection, worry, doubt, etc. Then Tifereth holds the space of beauty, which we see often in the sense of victory in the sixes or winning success. Uh, Netzek itself is ruled by Venus and holds the energy of victory. And we see when you apply that to the sevens, what happens when we are taking control of our lives and situations and when we're at the mercy of our fears, right? And the eights are Hod, which is splendor, which we can see really expressed in um, joy of work, 
um, understanding when it's time to leave and start a new path, etc. Um, a time for action. We can see that in the eights and the minors. Then yes, it holds the foundation. And that's number nine, and we definitely see what ends up happening as that divine energy becomes manifest through the minors into that, as we move into that energy of the ten, that energy is really condensed in there. We really see the contrast, and we see what happens with the foundation that we started laying in the ace. And then ten is the kingdom, um, Malchus, the kingdom, and... I think the way we see that manifested in the minors when we're looking at this energy is definitely in the fullest expression, that descent of the everlasting into the manifest world, that the fullest expression of that energy, for instance, with the Ten of Pentacles or the Ten of Skulls, we have that energy of legacy, dynasty, family, um, traditional family energy, and the, the, the wisdom, the, the lessons that are passed down through the family line, just as one example of a... Of, a 10 card in the minors. So you can see how that also applies to the minors. It applies to every aspect of the tarot. We're taking this energy of the tree of life and the Kabbalah and applying it to every aspect of the tarot. Um, so, you know, in your own journey with the Kabbalah and the tarot of vampires, play and explore those, play with and explore those themes, see how they work with the cards themselves. Um, I really encourage you to do that. So this is my little rundown on the Kabbalah. Um, again, if you have more questions, take advantage of Google search. Take advantage of a search on YouTube. Um, there are other readers, other occultists who are much more well-versed. That wasn't the appropriate English, but who are more well-versed in the Kabbalah than I am and who can really give you a depth that I will not be able to in this video. I understand the Kabbalah I have a rudimentary understanding of it in regards to how I work with it with the tarot. Um, and you will find that this also plays out and assists you in working with decks like the Hermetic Tarot, Crowley's Thoth Tarot, as well as Rider Waite Smith. You're going to be able to apply this information across the board. But if you have any questions, do research yourself. Feel empowered to do that. And also, the Phantasmagoria book has all of this information that I just shared with you inside of it. So you can just grab your book, reread again, to, you know, take some notes. Lay the, lay, actually, laying the cards out can really help you if you're a visual person to get an understanding of how the Tree of Life actually works and how it looks as far as connecting to the tarot itself. So, I hope you found this helpful. Um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about working more in depth with the cards personally for self-work and self-care and self-growth. So we'll be getting into some of that yummy stuff. Um, and if I haven't covered anything as far as the brass tacks of working with the deck, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get one of those videos up before we go too far into self-care and journeying with cards, etc. As always, I'm sending you all much love and many blessings. I will see you in the next video.